In order to do the empirical formula for the practice for tonight, you're going to be given percentages for different elements. These are elements, not molecules. So it's 28.4% copper and 71.6% bromine in a certain molecule. So what you're trying to figure out is what the subscripts will be in here and here based off of these percentage points. A good way to begin is a percentage is out of a hundred. So you could assume that these this molecule is out of a hundred grams. So 28.4 percent copper is another way of saying 28.4 grams of copper. So what we need to do is convert grams of copper into moles of copper. In order to do that, you're going to need the element chart. And what you find out is that for every 63 grams of copper, there are one mole. However, what we have here is 28.4 grams of copper. Whatever factor we use in dividing 63 by, we're going to do the same thing to 1. And what we should end up with for the moles of copper is 0 0.45 moles of copper. You would do the same thing with the bromine, 71.6 grams of bromine. And you would use the for every statement using the molecular weight of bromine, which would be 80 grams. So for, 80, for every 80 grams of bromine, there are one mole. And what you would find is that you end up with 0 0.90 moles of bromine. So now we need to figure out the ratio of copper and bromine from these two numbers that we have for the moles. So we would choose the lesser of these two numbers, which would be 0 0.45. And we would divide both of those numbers by 0 0.45 moles. Now in doing that, what we're trying to find is a ratio. And the reason why we choose the lesser is because, because it is lesser, we could assume that this Cu, the number of moles of it, will be 1. So for this, we should get 1. And for this, we should get 2. So the ratio of Cu and Br is 1 and 2, respectively. So the molecule with these percentage points is CuBr2. For number 2, we do the same thing. 77.3% silver is the same thing as saying 77.3 grams of silver. We would use the for every statement with the molecular mass of silver. And we would calculate the moles of all of those different elements. When it says oxygen, because we're talking about creating an empirical formula, it is not talking about oxygen in the sense of a molecule, but rather in the sense of an element. So this is not one of those cases where you have to worry about diatomic or not. In this problem, we see that the 0.238 is the smallest of the numbers. So if we divide everything by 0 0.238, we would find the ratio of all of these. And if the number is sort of close, we round to the nearest whole number because in your empirical formulas, you would not have a percent or a point, decimal point in the subscripts. So in this case, we have Ag with 3, phosphorus with 1, and oxygen with 4. It would be Ag3, PO4. For number three, instead of the percentage points, we already start with grams, which makes it easier. We just convert those grams to the moles using the molecular weight. And we find that hydrogen and iodine both are around the same, 1.14. So both of these would be in a one-to-one -one ratio. And when we divide the oxygen, what we end up getting is 3. 
So the empirical formula for this molecule is HIO3. For the percent composition, what we assume is that we're starting off with one mole of water. So we need to figure out what the molecular formula for water is, which is H2O. If we have one mole of H2O, that means we would have two moles of H. And we would multiply this by the molecular weight of H, which would be one. And the units for this one are grams per mole. Another way of saying this conversion factor would be with the for every statement. For every one gram of hydrogen, there are one mole of hydrogen. So since we're starting off with two moles, we would multiply by two. And what we get is that, we're, that we have two grams of hydrogen. In the same one, we see that there's only one of the element oxygen. And using the for every statement, for every 16 grams, which we just got from the molecular weight of oxygen, there are one mole. We just said that there's only one of oxygen. So it's just one. And what we get is that there is 16 grams of oxygen. We're not done just yet. We just found the grams of hydrogen and the grams of oxygen, but they're asking for the percent composition in a molecule of H2O. So we know 2 grams of hydrogen plus 16 grams of oxygen yield 18 grams total of H2O. So the percent for hydrogen would be 2 grams divided by 18 grams times 100 and we would get 11 percent hydrogen and 16 grams for the oxygen divided by 18 grams of the water times 100 and we would get 89 percent for the oxygen. For number five, we have to know what calcium bromide is. We know the total molecular weight based off of one mole of Ca and two moles of Br. We find how much each of those weighs, divided by the total, multiply by 100, and we should get 20% Ca and 80% Br. Number six, it's just asking for the percentage of oxygen in calcium phosphate. So we have the total mass of calcium phosphate, and the only tricky part is that oxygen has four here but it's in parentheses and it has a 2 here, so 4 times 2. You have a total of 8 moles of oxygen. 8 moles of oxygen is equal to 128 grams because it's 16 grams per mole. And you divide that by the total mass times 100 and you should get 41%.